My favorite comment yesterday is from Adrian Bardon, 782, who says, if it quacks like a duck and it walks like a duck, keep it away from Ohio. Very, very good advice. Some lib reporter just tried to set up Governor DeSantis uh, with a, a question about how the hurricanes are caused by global warming, how they're really Republicans' fault because Republicans don't support communism or whatever. And they, don't want to, they don't want to nationalize industries. Or, Ron DeSantis gave a perfect response. It's not due to global warming. Tornadoes? Yeah, it's tornadoes in I, I, I think you could go back and find tornadoes uh, for all of human history, for sure. Um, and especially, you know, Florida, uh, you know, how does this storm... Uh, rate in, um, in in kind of the, the history of storms, uh, I think it hit with uh, a barometric pressure of what was it about 950 millibars when it yes. when it hit, um, which uh, I, I think if you go back to, to 1851, uh, there's probably been 27 hurricanes uh, that have had lower bear. So the lower the barometric pressure, the stronger it is. I think there have been about 27 hurricanes that have had lower barometric pressure on landfall than Milton did. And of those, um, 17 uh, occurred, I think, prior to 1960. And the most powerful hurricane on record since the 1850s in the state of Florida occurred in the 1930s, the Labor Day hurricane. Barometric pressure on that was 892 millibars. Uh, it totally wiped out uh, the Keys. Uh, we've never seen anything like it. And that remains head and shoulders above any powerful hurricane that we've ever had in the state of Florida. The most deadly hurricane we've ever had was in 1928. The Okeechobee hurricane killed over 4,000 people. Fortunately, uh, we aren't going to have anything close to that on this hurricane. But even ones like Ian, where you had, uh, you know, wasn't even close to that. So you know, I just think people should put this in perspective there. Absolutely destroyed with facts and logic. I love it. I Because DeSantis has this great ability to speak, just kind of like a regular guy who's a baseball player. And it probably hurt him a little bit in the presidential race because he doesn't have that Ronald Reagan kind of, well, you and I have a rendezvous with destiny. He doesn't, he doesn't have that soaring rhetoric. It's not, not Lincolnian exactly. Uh, he doesn't have Trump's ability to do stand-up comedy wherever he goes. But DeSantis has what what uh, earlier political observers have want, have called the charisma of competence. <laughs> so sometimes during the presidential, people knocked his charisma. They said he didn't have enough riz to. But he has the charisma of competence, which and I, you know I, I think he's also a, a charming man in his own way, a friendly man in his own way. But this is where he shines. This is it because Ron DeSantis is extremely intelligent. And he can speak in a way that is understandable, that is simple for normal people who are not as intelligent as Ron DeSantis to understand. Because, yeah, so I think uh, pretty much uh, tornadoes have existed before industrialization. I think there's been tornadoes before. And so if you look... You know, around like 1850, you're probably going to see about 27, uh, you know, and you know, he, you know, he had these statistics crystal clear in his head, but he's, you know, he's just kind of talking in a folksy way. And then you're going to see this, this many with this kind of barometric pressure and this number here. And since 1922, it was this and that, and this, and it just, uh, the, the effect of it, of the sum total of his speech is to just completely destroy this narrative that climate change or global warming or whatever is responsible for hurricanes. That is how you do it. Absolute masterclass. Now, speaking of climate and climate change, the liberal reporter, Matt Iglesias, just had a speech that he was giving interrupted by some of these climate lunatics who climbed on stage and started yelling about the sun monster. All right, Matt Iglesias, uh, we're here to call you on your stance on fracking. Please, no. fracking, dangerous fossil fuel funded lie. The fracking of methane is the future of our world. How do you prove sandwich between two of the worst hurricanes as Milton is on the doorstep? We cannot afford this. So what do you say? You know, meets the country's national security needs, its economic needs. That, you know, okay, how do you mean economic scientific... needs when we have disasters that cost tens of billions of dollars? <laughs> and it's only getting worse. You see, if you're not watching, you see all these kind of weirdos with the sign. 
And then Matt Iglesias just kind of smiling with a bemused look on his face. Fracking is a false solution. Stop the pollution. Fracking is a false solution. Stop the pollution. The main instigator won't get off the stage. So Matt Iglesias just gets up, kind of walks off stage with security. You have a son. You want your son to have a future? I don't support hitting women under any circumstances, but a woman yelling at me about my son, that might tempt me, <laughs> okay? But Iglesias doesn't do it. Iglesias doesn't yell at them. He doesn't become visibly angry. He just kind of laughs, sits down, and as they're still surrounding him and yelling at him, he says, uh, Mrs. Wool, would you like to read an article? And it's kind of funny. But it reminded me of uh, a, a similar stunt that was pulled on a West Virginia moderate Democrat Senator Joe Manchin up at the Harvard Kennedy School back in March, I think it was. Some of these climate wackos come in, they pull the same stunt. Notice how Manchin's response is different than uh, Matt Iglesias' response. You sick f- How dare you? And then security throws this guy on the floor. <laughs> he gets out of the room. <laughs> and that's... That's a better response. I thought Matt Iglesias did fine. He, he didn't really allow them to intimidate him. He just kind of laughed, you know, and then they walked him off stage. He, he could have engaged them a little bit more, but he, he was fine. I'm not, you know, he's a super lib journalist who sometimes attacks his own side. He's kind of like a neoliberal, a little bit more establishment than some of the far leftists. Uh, it, it was okay. Manchin's response was better though. Somebody starts talking about your kid Somebody starts, in this case with Manchin, starts using profanity, calling you all sorts of nasty names. One ought to turn the other cheek, sure, but one ought never to cower. One ought never to, uh, one needs to turn the other cheek, not to uh, discard one's dignity, but to preserve one's dignity, in fact. So what does Manchin do? He squares right up on this guy. Manchin was a football player. He's a pretty big guy. And, but then, even, even if you're not a big Joe Manchin, then the security comes up in between them and just takes this kid who was interrupting this little seminar and who was yelling profanity at a sitting U.S. senator. The security takes this kid, picks him up, and hurls him out of the room onto the ground. That's the correct response. I know that some of the free speech absolutists on the left and the right might not support that kind of action, but that's the right kind of move. It is good to enforce civilization. We don't need these mouthy little brats behaving in a way that is contrary to civilization, that is contrary to standards and norms and decency, running their lips. We don't need that. Nobody really benefits from that. Certainly not interrupting a private event at a, a... serious place or an ostensibly serious place, the Harvard School or Harvard Kennedy School, with a sitting U.S. senator, we don't need to put up with that. Don't need to put up with that at all. We don't need to cede the stage to these people because of some false notion of, of free speech. It's good, when, it's good when security throws these guys to the ground, <laughs> when they are obscene and uh, getting up in the face of sitting senators. That was a good clip. Now, wa ba 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 Oh, hey, beep, boom, ring that bell and we'll see you next time.